Greetings class. I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk a little bit about trade secrets. I have in other videos talked about other types of intellectual property. Trade secrets are businesses ways of protecting um, private processes they have that they believe create a competitive advantage. So on this video um, you can see a picture of a woman who has a finger to her mouth saying this is secret and that's what a trade secret is all about. That's uh, information that gives business a competitive advantage. So uh, what the law does is to say if a business keeps that information secret, private, then uh, if someone finds it out through stealing it or getting it from another employee or breaking in and taking it, then the business who held the secret has the right to uh, sue the company or individual that has access to that secret information. But on the slide, I have a list of the factors that the courts look at to try to figure out whether the information is really secret or not. So um, the factors include the extent that the information is known inside or outside the business. Uh, so the fewer people who have access to the information within the business, the more likely it is a court will see that it's treated as a secret. I have heard, for example, that for KFC and their secret formula for their fried chicken, that the formula is in a safe and that uh, the executives who have the uh, key to the safe or the combination to the safe can't travel on the same plane, but it's only a few executives, two or three or so that have access to it. They take steps to guard the information. That's another criteria for a trade secret. Um, again, with the KFC example, the, the actual formula, the ingredients in the formula are uh, locked in the safe. And then the value of the information? Well, um, in the case of KFC, the information, they see it as very valuable, that they see that they're um, the batter for their chicken is what makes their chicken successful. That's a big part of KFC. Um, I suspect that if lots of people use that same um, formula, then it, the value of the formula would uh, decrease for KFC because people could go somewhere else. The money spent to develop the secret information. I don't know how much money KFC spent. Um, developing the secret recipe. It's been around a long time. Um, so I suspect there was some money at least spent to develop the, the, the information. And then difficulty of others to acquire the information. Um, the same idea that um, if KFC locks the formula away, only allows a few people to have access to it because um, it's in the safe um, that requires that one of those executives provide the combination then it would be difficult for others to acquire the information. Some companies even have uh, dummy uh, suppliers, suppliers who provide things that are not part of the actual formula. In addition, uh, not one person, not one entity makes the whole secret recipe. One company makes maybe two parts, another company makes a couple of other parts, and then that is combined by a third company and then packaged and sent to the individual stores. So it's difficult for others to, find, to acquire the information because you have to go through so many different steps. So if someone does find out the secret, first of all, if you're a company with a trade secret, you don't want anyone to ever find it out because once they do, it's really over. It doesn't matter that um, there is a remedy available uh, but because once the secret's out, you can't, as they say, unring the bell. On the slide, I have the word thief there, and that's typically how someone gets a, a trade secret. Either they steal it and they steal it from breaking in, which could happen, or it could be that an employee reveals it. Either way, um, then the employee is violating a um, confidentiality agreement. So what companies do is they do have contracts or confidentiality agreement with those um, employees who do have more knowledge about the secret, 
And the idea is that those agreements remind that person that they are to keep the information quiet. And then, of course, wrongful acquisition of the information. I started with that. Uh, if someone steals it, breaks in, takes it somehow, then um, there would be liability for that. What are the remedies? An injunction, which is a court order to stop someone from using the information. A uh, suit for damages. Uh, state criminal prosecution, because there are state law remedies as well as federal remedies when it comes to trade secrets. And the Federal Espionage Act was specifically designed to give businesses a remedy um, in case someone did steal their secrets. So how do you protect yourself? Because that's the more important part. So on this slide, I have a picture of a door. How do you protect yourself? You create non-disclosure, non-compete confidentiality agreements, and employees who have access to any of that secret information have to sign those agreements. You limit access to the information. If it's broadly available within a company, then that tends to weigh against it being a trade secret. Um, using proprietary labels and encrypted software. So, um, the labels that information comes in or that ingredients come in, they're labeled that they belong to the company. If in the case of software, the software is encrypted so not everyone can have access to the information. Reminding employees about secrecy uh, periodically, letting employees know not only that they've signed an agreement but that they have a continuing obligation to keep that information secret. And then conducting exit interviews, especially of those who are higher up, but of all employees to make sure to remind those employees that the information is secret information. It is that, that business's proprietary information. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you online.